beginning, there was darkness, and then bang, giving birth to an endless expanding existence of time, space, and matter. Every day, new discoveries are unlocking the mysterious, the mind-blowing, the deadly secrets of a place we call the universe. The past and the future, the ultimate vacation destinations. But are they within reach? They could happen within a few years or a few decades. When you travel through time, strange things start to happen. You can imagine warping things so dramatically that you can actually visit yourself in the past. Some humans have already made the trip. You will have jumped into the future while aging very little. That's really cool. See how it's possible as we unravel the mystery of time travel. Of all the riddles of the universe, time travel may be the most perplexing. Time itself has a lot of fascination for us, and so we end up thinking of ways of cheating time and things like that, going back in time, changing things. Time travel could involve going back in time or speeding into the future. But for the moment, every one of us is frozen in the present. Yet science holds out the possibility that we might loosen the hold that time has on us. Einstein's theory of relativity, in which time plays a central role, makes time travel an open question. Our best theory of time, which is relativity, doesn't explicitly forbid time travel per se. It might be that there are things we yet don't understand that will improve the theory. But it seems that there are ways of constructing scenarios within relativity that allow you to go back in time. Traveling into the past seems improbable because time only goes one way, forward. Physicists call this the arrow of time. The arrow of time is just the fact that you can always orient yourself moving from the past to the future. You remember the past, you don't remember the future. You can cause things to happen in the future, but you can't cause things to happen in the past. If you took a movie of things going on in your everyday life, like mixing cream into your coffee, and then you played that movie backwards, it would be perfectly obvious. Cream mixes into coffee, it doesn't unmix. That's the arrow of time. The arrow makes time a one-way street of irreversible events, something we know intuitively from our everyday experience. On a pool table, you can break, but don't expect the balls to realign on their own. You can scramble an egg, but you can't unscramble it. The reason why time has an arrow is a fundamental law of physics that says all things in the universe move from orderly states to disorderly states. As the universe gets older, as we move from the past to the future, all the differences between the past and the future can be summed up by saying that the universe is winding down. The universe is going from being orderly, very neatly arranged, to disorderly and messy. So if you had a plate that was a nice plate that was put together and orderly, it breaks, it becomes more disorderly, that's very natural. And if you try to restore order by gluing the plate back together, your actions release enough energy into the surrounding environment to create more disorder in the universe as a whole. But the arrow of time can be bent in extreme conditions. It all goes back to Einstein's theory of relativity. Einstein showed that the gravity of massive objects like planets, stars, black holes can actually cause space itself to bend. More amazing than that, he showed that space and time are actually linked into a single something he called space-time. This means that whenever space is warped, so is time. 
and nothing in the universe can bend space-time more than the supergravity of a black hole. As you can imagine, the gravitational field is so strong that space and time curl back on themselves. And you can start at one point, go forward in time, and come back at the point that you left. When the arrow of time bends around to meet its tail, it creates an endless loop in which the same events happen over and over. So if this is time curling back on itself, and the universe just repeats itself over and over again, every moment in time would just repeat an infinite number of times. An endless loop would become pretty frustrating for anyone. But suppose a time traveler can land in the past without the constant repetition. In that case, there are other roadblocks. The most perplexing are the inconsistencies or paradoxes that pop up when we start meddling with the past. A famous example of the kind of inconsistency you can get with time travel is called the grandfather paradox. And this is where someone goes back to the time of, for example, their grandfather. So imagine that I go back in time with a time machine and meet my grandfather in 1937. He's just about to go on a blind date with my grandmother. They've never met before. But actually, I convince him not to go on that date. He's actually interested in the races, and so I tell him that there's an exciting race with Sea Biscuit that's coming up at the Santa Anita track. And so we go off together to that race. He never meets my grandmother. So what happens to me? How is it possible that I could have been born and then been able to go back in time, meet him, and stop myself from being born? So there's an example of an inconsistency. It's a, a loop in time that really doesn't make sense. But if time travel is possible, Nature must have a way around the contradiction. One thing that physicists are quite certain of is that the universe ultimately makes sense. In all of physics, in all of science more generally, consistency, self-consistency, common sense, if you like, is something that is a fundamental principle. Physicists have come up with at least three ways that nature might act to prevent time travel paradoxes. The first is simple. Nature prevents paradoxes by making time travel into the past impossible. In other words, it can't be done. A different alternative is the strange idea of multiple universes. One way of dealing with travel back in time is to say that you actually enter a different parallel universe after having made the journey back in time. So you don't affect the history of the universe from which you came. In effect, anything that can happen will happen. But the way it happens is by entering a parallel universe. Pretty bizarre thought. A third solution to the paradox problem is the notion that if time travel is possible, you just won't be able to change the past when you get there. The science behind this can be illustrated by reducing the problem to the simplest situation you can think of. For example, balls on a pool table. Let's set up a pool table that's like a time machine. If a ball enters one pocket, it travels through a wormhole and can exit another pocket before it entered the first pocket. So it's a time machine. So now suppose the ball really does go through the first pocket emerges before it entered, and then hits itself before it entered the first pocket. That would deflect it, preventing it from entering the first pocket, and thus preventing it from having exited the second pocket and done the deflection in the first place. So it's a paradox. However, the idea of self-consistent solutions gives us a way out of this paradox. Suppose that the ball exiting the second pocket can only hit itself in such a way as to deflect it into the first pocket. Then the whole loop is self-consistent. There's no paradox. 
We think that nature always somehow manages to choose the solution that provides self-consistency. In other words, you always get a solution that does not produce a paradox. If that's the case, and Clifford Johnson were able to travel to the year 1937, he might be able to meet his grandfather. But despite his best efforts, nothing he does would alter the fact that somehow his grandfather will meet his grandmother to allow Clifford to be born. One way or another, the universe will prevent him from changing history. But we don't have to worry about paradoxes when we travel forward taking the arrow of time into the future. Traveling forward in time is the easiest thing in the world. Every minute, you move one minute forward in time. One thing we can do to change how we move forward in time relative to each other is to actually move at different velocities compared to each other. A time machine that takes us into the future is based on Einstein's discovery about time and speed. The faster you move in space, time, for you, slows down, as compared to people standing still. And as mind-bending as this seems, it's actually been proven by experiments. Clocks have been placed on rapidly moving airplanes and rocket ships and they've moved over some distance at a very rapid speed. And when the atomic clocks were measured after the end of the journey, they had progressed forward in time a little bit less than similar clocks which had remained at rest on Earth. The effect is called time dilation, and we can use it to travel into the future. In fact, it's already been done. Russian cosmonaut Sergei Krikalev has logged more than 803 days in orbit, traveling 17,000 miles an hour, making him the world's record holder in time travel. Though you'd hardly know it to look at him. What's actually happened is that he's about a 50th of a second slower in the amount of time that has passed for him compared to everyone else who stayed on Earth. But dilation really begins to pay off as a time machine when you pump your speed to just under the speed of light. The idea is to let clocks on Earth move at their normal speed while you're off in space and your clock is moving more slowly. When you get back, you're in the future. Suppose, for example, you wanted to go 500 years into the future. To move 500 years into the future, you'd have to move at 99.99% of the speed of light for seven years. When you get back, you'll have aged only seven years. But everything on Earth will have aged 500. But one of the biggest problems with building a time machine for travel into the future is finding enough fuel to boost a spaceship to speeds that high. There's no law of physics that says you can't go close to the speed of light, but your rocket ship becomes heavier and heavier as you go closer and closer to light speed. So you require more and more fuel to accelerate you smaller and smaller amounts. And you need more than an infinite amount of energy to actually break the light speed barrier. But high speed isn't the only way to zip into the future. Einstein's theory of relativity says high gravity also slows down your clock the kind of gravity you might find near a black hole. Let's say you're in a spaceship, and you go and you park yourself just outside a black hole for a while. Once you return to Earth, you will notice that many, many years may have passed on Earth, but only a few weeks or months will have passed in your own frame of reference. You will have jumped into the future while aging very little. That's really cool. But spending years at high speed, or near a black hole, is a slow kind of time travel. For more impatient voyagers, there may be an instantaneous version by way of a shortcut through space called a wormhole. It could also become a corridor through time. To conquer time travel, 
we have to tread a long path that takes us through bizarre theories and incredibly complex technology 